Today is a benchmark day in the history of Oklahoma City and the MAF 3 projects as we break ground on the modern streetcar project that has been the subject of so much attention and so much work and we are excited for this day to come. I was uh, reflecting quite a bit today as this is a big day in the history of Oklahoma City and I was reflecting back what it might have been like in the late 1940s when they were removing the streetcar from the streets of Oklahoma City. Um, in thinking back to that day, it was a day when the existing system, the existing cars had pretty much lived their natural life expectancy. But America was moving toward another direction. We were hitting the accelerator, moving toward a more car-centric economy, a more car-centric planning directive. And all cities west and most cities even east were heading towards sprawl and further development, trying to create extremely large cities where automobiles could roam freely. And you think of how successful that effort was. They, they took the automobile-centric economy very, very far, and it has to a certain extent uh, provided uh, growth patterns for us that we enjoy today and we curse today. But to an extent, you might ask yourself, well, why are we going back? Why are we, why are we bringing the streetcars back to Oklahoma City? Why are other cities bringing streetcars back? Isn't that from a distant day? And, and I think a lot of the talking points that we used during the 2009 MAPS 3 campaign still work. First of all, we can all envision a day when we're going to have some level of, of commuter rail that might bring a distant person in from Norman or Edmond or, or somewhere in between. And when that person arrives in downtown Oklahoma City, they're going to need a way to move around the city freely. So it makes sense from the metro standpoint and, and in investing in a, in a larger rail rail-based transit authority. Um, we also know that our current bus system is limited because of its lack of a downtown circulation. And I think this streetcar and the implementation of the streetcar only adds to the idea that our bus, city, bus system becomes much more relevant. You're much more likely to take the bus downtown to the transfer center if you know the streetcar is going to come by and pick you up and take you exactly where you want to go. People who ride the streetcar will have two route options. The first option is a 4.8 mile main line, and the second route will be the two mile Bricktown Loop. The streetcar route will have 22 stops. The routes, the routes will be able to serve our city with five street cars. Connection is the key. The street car will allow access to more than more parts of Oklahoma City through Embark's transit, transit network it with connections at the downtown transit center. As far as the timeline is concerned, our streetcar maintenance facility is under construction at Southwest 7th and Hudson, directly west of Union Station. Uh, it is scheduled to be finished in late October, which is coming a lot quicker than we think, assuming or given that this is already February. Um, the first streetcar will be completed this June. I'm hoping to get a birthday present, Mayor. <laughs> I'd like it to be here on time. And we hope uh, to launch the service in December of 2018. The Embark staff is developing a streetcar safety campaign to educate drivers, pedestrians, and bicyclists how to avoid accidents once streetcar service begins. You know, this is a unique um, form of transportation in that it runs in lanes of traffic. We don't have the space um, to have dedicated lanes for the streetcar, so it will be running along with traffic, along with our bike lines, along with our cars, and along with pedestrians. And so we all need to learn how to uh, coexist together.